Introducing Rust Rover. Send Rust over a standalone Rust IDE by JetBrains. Now, first off, I do want to say that JetBrains holds a special place in my heart because JetBrains was the first IDE I really learned to love. It was first NetBeans, and I just knew no better, right? And I tried Eclipse afterwards and said, wow, NetBeans is incredible. NetBeans, it's not Eclipse. That's what is selling point. And then one time during college, I opened up Vim and thought, only dumbasses use Vim. By the way, I use Vim full time now. Anyways, after those experiences, I finally switched to IntelliJ as forced required due to uh, my new job. I was working at a company called Web Filings, a little publicly traded company. Back then, it wasn't publicly traded. I think it's called Workiva now. Anyways, I had to use IntelliJ, and uh, me and a friend had a contest to see who could learn Vim motions faster. And I thought Vim motions are stupid, but I'll learn it anyways. Within one week, I could never use anything but Vim again or Vim Motions. And then I used IntelliJ for many years after that and absolutely loved it. So this is actually kind of cool. I'm curious if this really is going to live up to the hype. Is this going to be amazing? I'd actually use this. I would use a Rust IDE to just try it out because I really do like IntelliJ and what they build. I do not like the startup time, but I'm fine paying a one-time upfront cost for a project for incredible, incredible integration with something like this. I, you always hear me dog on VS Code. I think the problem with VS Code is that it's it's neither an editor and it's not really an, an IDE. It's like a hobbled together JavaScript mess that's slow that has most of the IDE stuff and most of the editor stuff, but never quite picked a lane to be in. Because, you know, because everyone's always just like, no, it's an, it's an editor. No, it's an IDE. No, it's an editor. No, it's an editor that you can make into an IDE, IDE sort of, you know, and it's built with Electron. So... Let's see what they do this. Okay, when will there be a Rust IDE? Uh, we get this question from our users quite frequently, and today we are happy to announce that the day has arrived. Welcome Rust Rover, our standalone IDE for Rust. Let's go. As many of you are aware, we've worked for years to bring support for Rust functionality as a plugin that works both in IntelliJ IDEA and C Lion. Yeah, see, I always thought C Lion was going to be there. I didn't realize that they were going to have a separate one. I, I thought C Lion was like the place to go. However, time and time again, we received requests from the community for an IDE specifically dedicated to Rust and its ecosystem that also has features on par with the existing JetBrains IDEs. Today, we're uh, opening the Rust Rover Early Access Program. Yep. Yep. Well, wouldn't it, wait, hold on. Wouldn't it technically be R? Wouldn't it be Reap? You're telling me you don't want to call it Reap? The, the great reaping? We loved uh, for you to try it. So I will say that when I did try Fleet and their early access, it was actually dog water. I really don't think you should try to make something in the middle. Honestly, I think, the, I think middle is terrible. Fleet. Fleet is just awful. And so I had a horrible time using Fleet. I feel like it was a huge fail on them. Like, I don't think you have to chase IntelliJ. I don't think you're winning anybody, or I don't think you have to chase VS Code. I don't think you're winning anyone from the, from the, Intel, uh, from the VS Code community. I think you just keep doing what you're doing, right? Give us feedback and help us shape the product. We'll listen to your feedback and update frequently to ensure that the product is meeting, meeting our users' needs. Rust Rover, send Rust over, will be, our, let's see, will be free during the public preview, and the license model will be finalized closer to the date of commercial releases. Okay, cool. So that thing... What? It's probably going to end up being like $100 a year or something like that. Uh, commercial ID. As the number of users of the Rust plugin has grown, so has the demand for new functionality. Within Rust Rover, we aim to take JetBrains Rust support to the next level. Stay tuned for the future updates. Consequently, the investment required by us uh, to provide such functionality is also increasing. Yeah. I mean, this would be really hard because Rust doesn't necessarily play well with all the other tools in the ecosystem, right? There's GDB, and then you really just need like Rust GDB. You need the Rust Dash version for everything. And so I'm very curious how this is all going to play out. In line with our other IDEs to ensure continued sustainability as a team and as a company, Rust Rover will be offered under a commercial plan after the REAP period. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We aim to release Rust Rover before September 2024. Okay. 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 Existing open source plugin. The existing open source plugin, which we have been working on for a number of years. That's cool that they make it open source right away. I like that. I like that. Good job, IntelliJ. Good job, IntelliJ. Has served as a building block for Rust Rover. This plugin will remain open source and freely available on GitHub and the marketplace. However, moving forward, we'll be investing our efforts into Rust Rover, which is closed source. For the existing open source plugin, we'll do our best to maintain compatibility with newer versions of our IDEs, but we won't be fixing bugs or adding new features. This existing issues, uh, the the existing issues that are on GitHub, uh, where applicable to Rust Rover, have been imported into our issue tracker. Okay, so that RIP open source plugin. Uh, unless if they allow community maintenance, I guess that's the big question. Do you think they're going to allow community maintenance? I mean, should they 
should they like appoint someone from the community that wants to be like in charge of running it? I think that would probably be a really good move and make people feel like they could, you know, keep it going. I don't know. To me, that uh, 100% no. I don't know if it's 100% no. As far as I can tell, Rust or IntelliJ tends to be a pretty good company, right? They they tend to be a pretty, yeah, you could fork it, you could do whatever you want, but it'd be best if you could just have the official support, right? We can all agree just having official support is fantastic. What does TJ have to say? TJ is actually the only person that I trust. Can you just fork it if you want to, right? You can just fork it, but it'd be nice to have it as the official, right? Because you don't want a bunch of different ones. It's not like I understand them, but how cool would it be if you poured this much engineering hours into Rust Analyzer instead of just rolling out a new one? My guess is they will use Rust Analyzer, and then they're going to do some extra stuff on top, which I think is just perfectly good, right? Because the thing is, is you want to make a compelling product that brings people in. And so the only way you can do that is you have to be able to, like, you have to put a lot of engineering hours into it, right? And so it's like either you put a lot of engineering hours into it, spending literally millions a year building out functionality that you cannot monetize on, or you spend million dollars a year building out something that you can. And they already did that with the Rust plugin. I don't know. To me, it just seems reasonable. To me, it seems reasonable that, hey, we can't afford to simply just build out functionality free forever. This is what we're doing. We made it open source because we didn't want to support a full IDE. We just didn't think there was demand, so we just didn't do it. But instead, we gave you what you wanted for a number of years. But now we think it's time to take it up a level and build our own you know, commercial grade IDE. And when you get a commercial grade IDE, from, by the way, this is not an ad. I just actually like IntelliJ. Shockingly enough, I simply like IntelliJ. If you want, if you want an ad, like if you want some ads, if you do, just check out this coffee company, baby. <laughs> Gosh, so good. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually really do like I really do like them. I think they they were such a foundational moment in my engineering career that when I look at this, I can't help but to think like this is where I truly got started was IntelliJ. IntelliJ gave me the ability to become the engineer I am. And so it's like I don't think I can ever I can't look back on it negatively, right? Just like NetBeans. NetBeans is a piece of shit. But guess what? It was amazing for what it was when I used it. And you just got to judge things by the time they are created in. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was Pascal for Turbo Pascal for you? Yeah. And that's why I don't, I mean, that's why I, I shouldn't dog on VS Code. But I just want to let you know that as, that as a human, I'm a hypocrite. Okay? VS Code sucks. Yeah! <sighs> what can you do? Uh, this plugin will remain open source, freely available. Okay, I really hope that they get a community manager on board. Support for IntelliJ and C Lion. Uh, like many of our IDEs, the functionality of Rust Rover can be installed as a plugin into the IntelliJ Idea Ultimate. During the preview period, it will also be possible to install into C Lion. I'd love to see it. I mean, why separate out C Lion? I feel like if you're working in Rust, Rust plus C plus plus, like the embedded. The embedded IDE, right? Give it all of like the the low level, the systems IDE, right? Make it into one thing that you know people could really love that are working on these different programs. Uh, this Rust dedicated IDE, I, I'm not 100% convinced it's a great idea. Versus, I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. I think having it together would be good. Um, this is because we're still not certain whether users will need the plugin or whether dedicated Rust IDE will be sufficient. Okay. Very interesting. So they actually will build it as purely a plugin until it's really, truly obvious that it's purely something else. Joining the Rust Foundation. Oof. Good luck on that one. We are confident that the Rust ecosystem and community will continue to grow. Otherwise, we wouldn't be betting on it, uh, uh, betting on an IDE. On that note, we are happy to announce that JetBrains has joined the Rust Foundation along with many existing members who will help support the efforts of Rust community and drive uh, its future development. This might be the most healthiest joining of the Rust uh, Foundation in a long time, so I'm very excited about this. I think the Rust Foundation is obviously an absolute disaster, no matter what you say, with all the problems that continuously crop up at all periods of time in, that are surrounding Rust. It just seems to me that the foundation and the project, they just got the wrong people on it. And so I hope that some new blood, some IntelliJ stuff will help make this stuff better because that would be good. I'd love to see some management cleanup. It would be fantastic. Um, anyways, I don't know. That's very cool, though. Isn't calling it Rust uh, against the Rust Foundation? Yeah, they might actually... They, well, they're joining the Rust Foundation so that they can use the term Rust Rover. It's officially supported by the Rust Foundation. 
literally, they're on the Rust Foundation, and they called it Rust Rover, right? Yeah, they did. They did. Well, they, they, I mean, it just goes to show for those that, uh, you know, don't really care about that kind of stuff. What it does go to show, all the Rust drama, what it truly goes to show is that goodwill is hard to earn, easy to destroy. Consider that. Like, if you're making a product that involves devs, how do you remain on goodwill? You know, so what I see is that you are upfront with how you plan to monetize. You're upfront with how you want to do things. Are you still using Rust a lot? Yeah, I programmed Rust for two hours yesterday. Like Unity. We're about to talk about Unity and what they did. Like being more upfront. Well, I mean, the Unity one is less surprising. We'll get to that one. But like, you got to be so careful. You just got to be so careful. And that should be the forefront of everyone's mind that's working in the public is that whatever you're doing, be as clear as possible to your users. Show them what you're doing. Because honestly, someone that knows, like this right here, notice that they're saying, hey, they're going to build this out. And they're going to, A, not support the uh, current open source plugin anymore. They're not going to be making their new one open source. And they will start charging in the future. Right? So even if you don't like that, that sting doesn't sting very much, right? You kind of feel it. You kind of know. Now, I wish they were clear on the open source. Who gets to own it? Are they going to allow the community to continue to push it forward? Will there be community members doing all that? Great. But it's still, they, they were upfront. They were forward. I just like IntelliJ. I like how they've always operated. I don't have any current problems with them. Fine by me. Charging as a company for tools? Perfectly fine by me. Keeping things a secret sauce for your environment? Fine by me. I don't care about that kind of stuff. I don't think you guys should either care about that. Uh, Idea Vim is the best Vim implementation. Changed my mind. It is. It legitimately is the best Vim emulator. It's so good. It was good 10 years ago. It was good 12 years ago. JetBrains is the company. IntelliJ is the ID. Exactly. Idea Vim is great. Yeah. Anyways, uh, JetBrains has avoided drama completely. Good decisions. Yeah. Everyone knows exactly what's going to happen. Very straightforward. Perfectly fine with them. Hey, JetBrains, you're doing a lot of good things. Make sure you get a community manager. Let people manage the open source plugin themselves. If they wish to make it on par with whatever functionality you offer, let it happen. You know what I mean? Let the community do the community thing because then you can continue to have uh, great, you know, some great some greatness. Uh, as far as the whole Russia-Ukraine drama, first off, you can't really call it Russia-Ukraine drama. Um that's probably not the right term for it. It's it's a war. Uh, but the the hard part about the IntelliJ is there's a lot of there's a lot of Russians, or it is a fully Russian company. But it's one of these problems where you can't really throw the baby out with the bathwater. So I don't know what their statements are on the war. And honestly, I don't. I, I actually would rather not hear them because <laughs> I really like them. Special military drama. It's very military drama. Honestly, uh, they condemned them. Good. Okay. So there you go. And to, uh, they're a good company. They can be Russian and still be good companies. There's this dumb notion recently. Like, I've seen it a bunch on Twitter. Some guy's like, oh, I'm from Russia, and this is what's happening. And then the next tweet right up below him is just like, fuck you, you Russian dirtbag. And it's just like, you know what? That's You don't want to do that either. That doesn't make you look good either, right? Not everybody, you know? Not everybody. You don't, you don't need to do that to people. And I see. So that's why I, was, I knew this would come up with the whole IntelliJ thing. And so that's kind of my opinion. You know, if, if they're fine people, they're fine people. There you go. They have a statement on Ukraine. You can read it for yourself. You know, if they say, hey, we don't like that, that's good. We have made our, uh, in regard to the invasion of Ukraine, we condemn the attacks uh, of the Russians. There you go. You can still be Russian and totally, totally a normal person, right? <laughs> you got to extend grace to people, right? Uh, anyways, that's that. The name is the primogen.